Hello there and welcome to another Code Zonk video. Thank you for joining us again for some more Code Combat. We are going to explore more of the backwards, I'm sorry, the backwoods forest, which is the second world that opened up for us here on Code Combat. Let's go ahead and press the play button. It's going to bring us to our map and it's going to advise us to start here. We'll accept the advice of the yellow arrow and we will begin. We've got basic syntax, argument strings, loops, variables, and if statements. So a little bit more of what we were working with last week. Let's press play and see what we've got. Doesn't look like we have anything new that we need to equip, so we'll just press that play button and begin. Code combat. Delap. Oh boy, looks like we've got something to attack in this one. So our goals are to attack the thrower and the munchkin ogres, retreat from type ogre enemies. So if we actually find an ogre, it sounds like we need to run away. We'll learn more about our enemies by checking their type. So it does say that uh, here in this code sample that we've got find nearest enemy. We can actually say their actual type. So we're working with the enemy as an object now. Note that type is not a method like move XY is. So we don't include parentheses after the type. So type is actually a property of the object enemy. It's just going to actually, uh, it's probably a string uh, of the label. So let's go ahead and press the start button and see how it is that we're going to use that. And the nice thing about Code Combat is that when you've got something that's sort of new and interesting, they do make sure that they include some arrows here in the code window to sort of call out what they want you to look at. Undito. So if enemy type is thrower, attack it is what it says. So it's giving us a hint right here. That's terrific. So now that we now we understand how we're going to use enemy type, we're going to use it in an if statement. So here's what we'll do. We'll follow their advice to the letter and we'll say if enemy type is thrower. We will attack the enemy if it's a thrower. But if it's an ogre, we are going to run to the village gate. So if enemy type is ogre, then we're going to run away to the village gate. The village gate, where is the village gate? Let's have a look. Is this the village gate? Where's the village gate? Maybe it's this little X here. I'm going to assume that it is. Let's do this. Let's say self move X, Y, 41, 47. Let's hope that's correct. Let's go ahead and press run and see if we live. Delam. So far, I'm alive. Oh, it's an ogre. Run away, run away. Hey, I did it. So we did attack the throwers and the munchkin ogres, but we did retreat when the type ogre enemy came about. We ran away. So we were actually able to be successful by being cowards, which, cowards, which is good. So we've got our experience points for being uh, top shelf cowards and our gems as well. Let's go ahead and press that continue button and see what else we've got. All right, we've got another one here. Let's go ahead and begin. This is more basic syntax with arguments, loops, variables, and if statements. So a little bit more of the same, but a different scenario. Let's see what we've got. Nothing to equip. We'll just go ahead and press play. Code combat. We're going to stop the ogres, but we're going to save the peasants. All right, so these are the peasants right here. We need. It's, it's telling us to... What is it telling us to do? So we start here. It looks like we're patrolling at these X points. We're going to use an if statement to check if there's an enemy to attack. Be sure to move X, Y between the village's entry points. Okay, let's press the start. So it does look like we're in a loop. I would imagine that part of our loop is to sort of patrol between the two X points. Let's have a look and see what the code is doing right now. The code starts by beginning a loop. It does a, first it does a move to 3534. What's 3534? Okay, 3534 is our first X point. 
it says left enemy, self find nearest enemy. If the left enemy does actually exist, then it attacks it. Now move to the right entrance. Okay, so we'll move to the right, self move X, Y. We'll get the coordinates for the right area. The right area is 6031, 6031. So we wanna also check for a right enemy. So we'll say right enemy equals self find nearest enemy. Whoops. It gets impatient and it starts with when and it starts before I'm actually done. So now what I'll do is I'll say if right enemy actually exists, right? That's what that is. It's a true or false statement as to as if, if it actually exists. Then we'll attack the right enemy. Self-attack right enemy. And we'll do that twice. And then that's that. So it says use if to attack if there is an enemy. So it's, it's pretty much the same thing that you're doing over here. You're doing the same thing over here. You're in a loop, so you're kind of patrolling back and forth. So we may actually encounter enemies more than one time, but we may actually find that we don't encounter enemies every once in a while. Let's go ahead and press run and see if we're okay. Whoa. So it says from now on, levels are randomized, so you'll have to submit to see if you win in real time. Okay. Click the submit button to try and beat the level. All right, let's go ahead and press the submit button. So the submit button is actually going to show us what it, it, it... When I run it, it runs at a, about a billion times faster than anybody can actually see. So these are peasants that are coming in every once in a while. When a peasant comes in, I ignore them. I don't see any enemies and it moves on. So yeah, so it's it's interesting. It's it's totally randomized and that's why they're saying that you have to sort of submit to see if you are actually successful. But I get what they're doing here. It's very different. So in order to make these uh, exercises a little bit more effective, they have to sort of randomize these things now. So I get it. Let's go ahead and press continue and see what else we face. All right, we've got more of the same. So basic syntax argument strings, but we've also got the loops and we've got if statements as well. So let's see what else we've got. So it suggests here, it's got the yellow arrow pointing at the uh, item to equip. It sounds like we're going to be building as opposed to fighting. It does want us to have the uh, skill, the build type skills available to us, so we'll equip that. And then we'll go ahead and press play. So it suggests that we're not going to be fighting bad guys. It says we're going to have to stop them. But it doesn't say we're going to have to fight them. So let's see what we are got to do. So we've got to build a fire trap the same way that you build a fence, just with just with a different string. Okay. So it shows us an example of code down here. It says self build XY. We're going to be building a fire trap at certain coordinates. Okay. So that's definitely something that's familiar to us. We've done that before. Let's press the start and let's see what we've got going on over here. Hopefully it doesn't start until we're ready. So we do have a loop. So we are going to be patrolling between a bunch of points. So patrol the village entrances. All right. Village entrances are all of these points right here. So we've got three entrances. What it has us do first is it says, move to the first point. 4350 is the first point here. It does say check for an enemy. If the enemy exists, then we build a fire trap. And then we move on. Okay. When it moves on, it moves to 2534. That's this section right here. And then same deal. It says check for an enemy. So what we'll do is we'll say if... If left enemy, then self build XY fire trap. And we'll build it at that same exact location, which is 2534. Then we'll move to the last section. We'll get the coordinates. The coordinates are here 4321. That puts us at the very last spot. We'll set a variable. We'll call it bottom enemy. And we'll look for that by saying self find nearest enemy. Now, if an enemy exists there, then we'll have something to work with. Otherwise, it'll be null. So we can check for that by saying if bottom enemy. If the enemy actually does exist, then that will be true. And that will allow us to build 
that fire trap. So I'll build that fire trap like this at the coordinates of 43 and 21. And that should do it. So that's what we're doing in our loop is we're going here, 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 and then all the way back to the top again. We're just doing that in a loop. Now as peasants walk in, we should ignore them. But as bad guys walk in, we'll set fire traps, which should uh, blow them up. So we'll run this. If it's anything like the last time, it'll show it about a thousand times too fast. Let's try. Oh yeah. All right. So it, it does warn us again that levels are randomized. So to, do we have to actually submit it to see if we win in real time? So let's go ahead and press submit. Sees bad guy, sets the firebomb. There's bad guy, firebomb. That's a good guy. That's a good guy. That's a good guy. That's a bad guy. Yep, so it's doing what we expect it to do. Alright, so we did it. Alright. We got our experience points and we got our gems. Let's go ahead and continue. We'll do one more before we close up the video. Let's see what we got right here. We've got some uh, arguments, variables, loops, and if statements. So more of the same. Let's see what our scenario is in this next puzzle, though. It does want us to bring back our sword. So we're going to be doing some fighting instead of building this time. Let's go ahead and press play. Code combat. All right. So this definitely looks pretty interesting. We're going to make sure that we keep all of our villagers alive. I'm sure we want to keep ourselves alive as well. We need to eliminate the ogres. We'll get a bonus if there's no code problems. It does tell us here, remember, if, then, and else. If something, then do something. Else, do something else. So our if statements are going to become a little bit more complex. Let's press start and see what we've got. And just as always, it includes these yellow arrows here in the code window to let us know that there's something that we need to look at. So here I am, I'm starting here on the uh, coordinates here. We are going to be in a loop, so it sounds like we're gonna be moving continuously. Let's see, we do, uh, the first thing that we do is we check to see if there's an enemy, and if there is an enemy, we attack. Else, we move back to our defensive position. So that's interesting, okay. All right, so our defensive position, I suspect, is just this X. So we, didn't, we need to be aware of what our coordinates are. So here's what we'll do, is we'll say, if there is an enemy on the screen, we will go ahead and we'll attack that enemy. Otherwise, we will simply move back to our defensive position, as they call it, and that is located at 4034. So that looks like it's pretty simple. We'll press the submit button and see if we were successful. Our villagers need to survive. Ogres need to die, and we need to have no code problems in order to be successful. Let's see what we've got. Bad guy. Bad guy. Bad guy. Taking care of business here. And when there's nobody on the screen, I move back to that X, so that's good. So the code that we wrote looks like it was successful. So we did get our uh, experience points, we did get some more gems, and because we had no code issues, we got experience there and some more gems there too. So we're going to go ahead and close the video up there. Thank you so much for watching. Check with us next week because we've got more to do with Code Combat. Thanks again, and I'll see all of you in the next video.